everyone. This is your host, Glenn Guyton, and this is another edition of the Step Out Podcast. And you know this podcast is all about living your ideal life. I hope that you enjoy the life that you have been given, that you are utilizing your gifts and talents to the fullest. And today I have a very special guest for the Step Out Podcast. Uh, it is my friend Chantel Todman Moore. How you doing, Chantel? Good. Thanks, Glenn. Well, we're here in, in, in Kansas City, so this is somewhat of a mobile mobile podcast. So I'm, I'm on the road. I'm taking you places. We're, we're seeing the world. And I get to meet interesting and exciting people that are doing great things in their life. Yeah. So, so Chantel is one of the people that have, have she stepped out. Uh, she's uh, reaching her dreams. Uh, <laughs> she, she worked for an organization. We've done some work together, a religious organization. But now Chantel has decided to step out on her own. So can you just tell us a little bit, tell my my, my millions of listeners, uh, <laughs> millions. Okay, your millions, yeah. some of the things that you are you are doing as part of this uh, your, your new venture for yourself. Yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, so um, through the process of just developing my passions, realizing what I really wanted to be about in my life, I realized um, over the last couple of years, that I really wanna be investing in people and helping them to launch their own dreams. Uh, through coaching and I also really wanted to dig deeper into helping organizations um, truly become um, diverse and inclusive in ways that are powerful and impactful to their work and so I really just thought um, why don't I just go ahead and step out and do this thing um, launch my business and so I'm launching my business with my partner uh, Janelle Junkin who is a PhD student and a licensed music therapist and okay. so we're doing coaching um, and consulting around diversity and inclusion and doing some research work around those same kind of areas. So, so diversity and inclusion is, is your primary yeah. uh, area of focus. Oh, well, yeah. that's, that's great. Yeah. yeah, for consulting, but the, also the individual piece is working with women, because um, I feel like in a lot of ways, women can really be um, a force for change and good in organizations, but they're often underutilized and underinvested in it. So the coaching piece is really helping women be able to tap into whatever is inside of them that really is their gift they bring to the world and to their work. And so that's my individual piece with them. All right, well, that's good. And I think that goes along with the theme that we talk about is to, 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 to live your life and love the life that you live. Right. I and mean, that's one of the things that I say on this, this podcast. Um, that we have to find those things that we are passionate about yeah. and you being a woman I guess you're very interested in, yeah. in uh, yeah. women. Well that's actually really what it was. Um, our business name is Unlock Ingenuity and so it's really this idea that within all of us there really is something that we're given um, that is a creative thing that we can give to the world but oftentimes because of the roles that we're in, the stresses or even just feeling like we have to stay in this job or this career path, we're not able to tap into those things and how can we unlock those things to live our full potential. So this really, this business was about right, right. stepping out of those boxes and really being stepping able to out, live. she's taking my title. Uh, stepping out. Okay, I'm not that creative, okay. Uh. But anyway, stepping out and really living into our full potential. And we really think that um, the dynamic that we have as business partners is and living out our passions is really going to help set us apart from people who are just maybe doing a job because that's what's in front of them. Right, right. Not as what they're passionate about. So, so, so was it difficult for you to, to step out and kind of leave that that well that high paying uh a religious yes job. yes well you know i was <laughs> i was bankrolling yeah actually it really was more of a mental thing i think um uh, we're not encouraged to take risks. We're not encouraged in the way that we are. Are you uh, saying women or just people in general? I think people in general, but also okay. especially women. Okay. We're encouraged to um, kind of be safe um, and to d take the idea that you could step away from all those things and still be okay. Mm -hmm. um, that your voice was powerful and um, and that you could take those risks. It's something I really had a thankful a spouse that was very supportive of me and a community that really encouraged me to follow what I felt like I was supposed to be doing. And so it was a big step, right. um, but I don't regret it at all. And it feels like something that I'm continuing to live into yeah. and it's gonna take me places that not taking those steps wouldn't have taken me so 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 how long have you been on this uh, this journey <laughs> well, <Glenn. laughs> well um, I've been on this process with my business partner for about two years talking about how we really should launch this business uh -huh. um, and I, we kept waiting for like this kind of perfect scenario to develop that would make it possible with the least amount of risk um, but the more we talked about the more we realized that that scenario might not ever manifest itself right, and so right. about two months ago um, as I mentioned, my business partner is a PhD student, but two months ago I decided to um, go ahead and leave my job and pursue what I feel passionate about. That's good. And yeah. she's going to finish up her PhD, and right. we're launching this business together. And um, it's, been, it's been two months, so it's well, new. Good, right? It's new, right? Because because somebody has only been uh, looking at their dream for one day. Right? That's right. That's right. Two months. Right. So two years of contemplating and two yeah. months of actually um, stepping out and, and doing it. And eventually, you. I mean, we all have to step out. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, you, you know, we can have these dreams, and, and many of us have great ideas. 
but the people that are successful are the ones that are really willing to take that, those risks. Yeah, and I think that one thing um, is that you could set there forever with that and yeah. you wouldn't really... Forever. Forever, <laughs> forever, ever? And, and forever. you would miss out and the world would miss out on that gift. And so there's never going to be a perfect time. I know you hear this all the time, but there's never going to be a perfect circumstance. Right. Um, you have to kind of be the first person to take a risk on yourself and and be willing to take that step. So. Well, and I hear a lot of people say that. I mean, you said a very interesting thing that, uh, you know, you have a gift that you that you have to that, you know the world will miss out on your gift if right. you're if you're not willing to step out see some sometimes we get afraid mm -hmm. because of ourselves we're like oh, I don't know if I can do it but if you aren't willing to step out you may be depriving the world of your gift right and so it ain't it ain't it ain't, it's not about, you. It ain't about you it ain't about you it is and it isn't about yeah. you right but you, but you have to feel like you have something like I feel like I have something to share I don't know how many people are listening to this podcast I mean, it could be millions tell your friends about it <laughs> glenguyton.com you will be millions that's right that's right but somebody is going to be blessed because of what we're doing right now right it may be a woman it may be an african-american woman I don't know maybe be a good-looking guy who knows right who will see the relevance and I think yeah. that also was a big thing a barrier for me was I couldn't see people like me yeah. I didn't see people like me doing the things I wanted to be right. doing being in leadership right. being speakers being consultants coaching um, and so if I I said instead of keep looking for those people why don't I be that person right. that I want to see and so that's really about unlock ingenuity is being instead of waiting for somebody else to do the thing that you want to do do that thing don't yeah. wait for somebody else to show you that it's possible unlock ingenuity unlock you know, ingenuity like, now is that does that have anything to do with ingenue you know that term um, right it's like a young woman the ingenue the, I don't know. It sounds. There's like more you. layers. There's more yeah, layers. Look, gonna, up I have to, I have to, look up ingenue. It's kind of like it's a woman thing, but I don't know. No, no, no. Okay, no. but you know, you have to look at it. it's like the you, young ingenue in the, those women in the movies, like oh. kind of. I, don't know. You're, I, don't think you're, I think you're adding more layers to Maybe my, so. It could because I'm deep like that. You are deep like that. Yeah, no, I, I think, well, first of all, when you try to name a business, like that whole process I learned could just be really interesting. I don't know. You went with your name, and that's always, that's brilliant. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. but my, my partner and I, we really were wrestling with our name and what we really wanted yeah. it to be about. And we really do believe that within all of us, there is something that we've been gifted with, um, a, a level of creativity that that people can walk alongside you and help you unlock those gifts and um, and reveal them to the world and to share them with the world and in, in, inside of organizations too. There's a there's a capacity there that's often not tapped into. So yeah. that's really what about and, and doing that in creative ways. I think right. being willing to step outside those parameters that we're told that we we can't yeah. do. So and and now you know so uh, Chantel is uh, the mother of three beautiful daughters mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's a challenge too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and maybe it's not fair sometimes. Like as like as a man and. Uh, you know, we feel like, oh, you just go out and do business, and your wife is gonna stay home and take yeah. care of the kids. So, so for a woman with with a with a family, mm -hmm. I mean, it's good that we have supportive spouses, not just supportive husbands, but just a supportive spouse mm -hmm. when you when you have a family like that. Yeah, and I mean, everybody has different rules for their home and how they manage their lives, but it really wouldn't be possible for me to do even the work I was doing previously, but even what I'm doing right now without a spouse that really believed in me, believed in my vision, and created an environment in my home where um, we both take we both take risk and we both give support. Right. And so without that kind of uh, reciprocal relationship, it really wouldn't be possible for me to do what I do. And I think um, he's allowing me to give those gifts to the yeah. world. But I, I do definitely yeah. feel like women do deal with um, social more sometimes it's home pressure but also social, social pressure pressures and you should be at home with their right, yeah, kids you, I mean, doing their hair <laughs> cooking well, that stuff uh, well yeah and also that you want you to be ever, present oh, did you ever see good times you yeah ever, uh, I some of y'all may not be a good time yes yeah, but I'm you know young, but, yeah. you are, but like uh uh florida was doing something and he was like uh his wife florida james he was like the kitchen in the bedroom woman the kitchen in the bedroom right. and that's i mean that's old that was back in the 70s right but there's still somewhat of a stigma oh, no. for women stepping yeah, out yeah no right? there is and it's definitely um People still like to talk about people like women's places and mm. where it's appropriate for you to be a woman and excel in the home, but not necessarily outside the home. And um, at one point, I was actually running a women's group called the Women's Roundtable, mm -hmm. which is talking about women as uh, women with vocation and their calling and how they balance that. Oh. Because there's a lot yeah. of places in where you're celebrated as a mother mm -hmm. and as a, as a wife, but not often celebrated for um, your business accomplishments oh, yeah, right, right, right. or your professional accomplishments yeah. or your vocation. And so I wanted to create those spaces where women can talk about that and wrestle that and be acknowledged for those other things they bring to the world. But I just want to say quickly about being a mom, okay. actually um, leaving my formal role that I had in an organization and stepping on my own actually has freed me oh. emotionally, mm -hmm. physically, um, spiritually to be okay. more present for my family. So I'm. I'm more mentally present when I'm present. Great, great. Instead of trying to multitask them with my my organization, which right, is like yeah. my other child. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, it's actually yeah. freed me that's to good. do more. Yeah. So so yeah. So sometimes stepping out, we can we can free ourselves up to 
I mean, cause we don't, we, none of us have just one role, right? Right. I mean, like I'm a, I'm a father. I mean, that's a big role. I'm a husband. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, a big role. That's, it is a big role. <laughs> and, yeah. I mean, and, and so, you know, I asked her from a woman's perspective, but it's also from my perspective, you know, having that balance and telling my wife, Hey, I, I have other interests, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I feel like I need that support too, just right. as much as, as, a, as, as you do as a woman. You know, maybe our priorities, I have a, a great wife, our priorities may be a little bit different. Sometimes I feel like kids, they can, my kids are older, so I feel like they can just they do a lot. They can feel, but she still just wants to kind of nurture them. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily, that's not necessarily a gender thing, it's just that's how it is in our, in our family. Right, and in my home, my husband yeah. tends to be the more nurturing, nurturing person. <laughs> She hard. Well, no, she no, from, I'm not. She no, from I'm Miami. From nurturing. Me, me, she from Miami. She hard. You know? Yeah. You well, know? yeah. You got it. Well, honestly, <laughs> um, it's a tough world out there, uh -huh. and so sometimes raising young women, you have to help them realize like you got to kind of toughen up a little bit yeah, yeah, to yeah. Um, kind of make it through all the challenges, especially being people of color. You're going to hit some challenges. Right. You got to yeah. be able to encounter those and stay strong. So. Oh, well, you know, you mentioned being a person of color. So now, is your partner is she a person of color or is she not my partner she he he oh you have a male partner in your business <laughs> oh my man, I no no i'm talking about I'm your like, business how partner. many partners we're she talking got, about she, she got real <laughs> i went a couple levels yeah, okay yeah. yeah no my part actually that's what we also love about our partnership is that um she's a white woman from mm -hmm. um from Connecticut. Okay. Um, I know nobody from Connecticut. Okay, yeah. well, well, we have to meet. You'll have to meet her. And you'll yeah. know one. She's amazing. And what I really love about our partnership is that she really brings this other whole worldview. Mm -hmm. um, being a white woman and being able to even like underst um, understand what that community kind of yeah. encounters. Right, and right. so when we come to a situation, we're not just coming from one lens. We're able yeah. to bring multiple lens um, because we're a cross disciplinary yeah. group. Um, yeah. I have my MBA, she's getting her PhD, um, looking at organizations and systems. And so we're able to really bring um, both our gender and our background racially, but also just like how we are professionally, what we look at and what we care about. Right. Um, and our expertise really comes in a way that is complementary to each other. So yeah. I really appreciate not doing it by myself, but yeah. having somebody to bounce off ideas with that can bring a more um, cross-disciplinary approach to right. a problem. And, and I think that's, it's especially good if you are in the diversity and inclusion work to have uh, for your team to represent that. I mean, I've seen see some companies or consultants that are diversity or uh, intercultural experts, and they have no diversity whatsoever <laughs> within their problem. Uh, yeah, they, they have no problem diversity whatsoever. Yeah. But you know, so both of us are here in in Kansas City because we are qualified administrators of the uh, IDI. It's a uh, intercultural development in inventory. Uh, that help, helps organizations and individuals kind of see where they are uh, on, on their competence of, uh, I don't know, is inclusion the right word? Well, or? like intercultural mindset, yeah, so how yeah. they're able to interact with cross cultures. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and it's not just about like, it's not just, just race, it's not like black and white, but it's really look at it at cultural competence uh you know if you have international people you have people from uh different regions of the united mm -hmm. states so what i like about the idi and, and some people have been hesitant to uh incorporate anti-racism training that's when when people think diversity is either anti-racism or lgbtq stuff but it's, mm -hmm. it's much broader than that and, and i think companies if you're listening to this companies really need to start paying attention whether you're a religious organization or a college and university or a for-profit co uh, corporation, mm -hmm. uh, the United States is not getting any less diverse. Right, yeah, actually that's what I was thinking about. It's like, it's really preparing you for the current realities and the reality to come. It's not gonna, it's something like the bell has already been rung, you can't unring it. Yeah. Um, and so how can you really try to get current and ahead of the curve is by really um, stepping up your game around uh, mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion. Right. And if you don't have the language in the environment, you're not gonna be able to foster a place where people are gonna wanna be at, where they're able to invest and thrive in your organization. And you really wanna be able to do that to stay relevant. Yeah, so, so. the bell has been rung. People still say that. Do you, have you, do the you, bell you, has been rung, you, you can't boxing, unring the bell. You, you I don't know, I don't know. I don't but you boxing. know that's where it comes from, like boxing, right? No, you the know. The bell, you ring that bing, and then once, so. once the bell comes, then you, <laughs> I used to do a little boxing when I was at the Air Force Academy. I was, wow. little boxing, did a little boxing. This is your pre-pacifist days. When you're a boxer, yeah, yeah, that's right. Is yeah. boxing I mean, a pacifist sport? I don't know. I don't know. But I boxed a little bit. I get, you know how much I weigh when I box? I, I box in the 146 weight class. I weigh a little bit more than that now. Just a little. Just a little. Just a just, tad. Just a smidgen. Bit. Yeah. I saw you at lunch though, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, eating some salad. <laughs> you got, you got, you got your salad. That's, look, stuff. but that's part of stepping out. Is is really taking care of yourself because you don't want to invite. Uh, a, a professional speaker, a cons uh, well, maybe there are some fat consultants out there. <laughs> but really, if I, if I'm if, I, if I'm telling you how to step out and reach your dreams, I mean, it's not about being looking like uh, Tom Brady or Halle Berry or something like that, wow. or Giselle. 
I don't know nothing about that. But uh, it's not about looking like that. But it's, it's about saying, okay, I can go out and do my job and I can perform, right. at, you know, at the level I need to. You don't want me at breathing, can't, can't move, and, and I'm consulting with you, right? Yeah. I, and I'm not trying to, this not about, well, no, I think it's not it's about also... fat shaming. And, you know, I, I'm, yeah, you don't have to be an Adonis, but you want to be able to uh, both physically, like you said, mentally and spiritually, be, be ready yeah, yeah. to do your be job. Present. Right? And I do think that. Yeah, caring for yourself um, is a very important act that often gets left by the wayside, especially for yeah. those working in social justice. And I think that's a lot about oh, yeah. our, uh, my work and my work with my partner is really looking at helping people to be able to stay in the game for the long haul, to be able to really commit to the game, the work yeah. for the long haul. But if you're not, if you can't be present, then you can't be present. That's and right. So you have to care for yourself. I think that's really important. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, especially if you're on the road a lot. I mean, uh, consultants. I don't know if you're a consultant listening to this, but if you're on the road a lot. Yeah, you really have to take care of yourself. Because I, I have to be engaged when I'm in these meetings, but then when I get home with my family, I have to be engaged. Because it's not fair right. to me to be out living my dreams and then I get home and I can't engage with my family. Right, yeah, so really having tools that, that you know that are tailored to yourself that yeah. work to help you to be present, but also to care for yourself in a way that um, that you're not just falling apart at the seams because you're trying to be there for everybody, which is impossible, um, really helps sustain you for the long haul to be um, engaged in life that you want to be engaged in. So yeah. hopefully you have a, a team or a, some kind of tools that you use to help restore yourself, I'm renew I'm yourself. I'm running. Okay, you're running. running yeah. I don't believe in running unless I'm, I'm running, running for my life. I like um, okay. So, uh, so Chantel, uh, uh, just tell us you know, how can people get in touch with you? Um, yeah, how can they connect with you? Yeah. Um, so we're still in the process of, of formally launching our business. So don't go looking up Unlock Ingenuity because okay. you won't quite Unlock find it. Un ingenuity. Unlock Ingenuity. Yeah. UI. You, yes. Yeah. Or UN. Um, <laughs> don't worry about that. I'll tell okay, you later. All right, all right. Um, uh, uh, but you can find me um, on Facebook under my name, Chantal Todman Moore, or you, uh, my email address is c.todmanmore. And maybe you'll post a little link there. Yeah, we'll people. post the, we'll, um, the information. We'll post at Gmail. Yeah. So you can find me right. on. Oh, thank you. Down here, yeah, yeah. There I, it is, right there. Look. Uh, you, oh, there it is at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. As, as the sun is getting weird now, you can't yeah, really yeah. see us anymore. But yeah, I do have a Twitter account, but I don't really tweet. Okay. You got to tweet. Yeah. You know, I'm one of those millennials who's like on the edge, and so yeah. sometimes I'm not completely relevant. All right. <laughs> no, she is relevant. She's going to be relevant. We'll talk about some uh, things to help her. Uh, with my, find, with you her know, dream. you yeah. can find me by right. writing me a letter. Yeah, and you know, and so Chantel and I are will, will be in, doing some similar things. But hey, I think it's all about sharing. You know, my success is not uh, hampered by her success. Uh, that's one of the things that you know why I'm sharing this Step Out podcast. You know, listen to some good people out there that are doing good things. You can get some tips, and it's enough. Uh, it's enough out there that's needed for all of us to, to yeah. share resources. This is my thing I say, is that sometimes, especially people who have not always had access to a lot of resources, we feel like we have to fight over that same piece yeah. of pie, but why don't we just make more pie? That's right. Make oh, there's more, more pieces. Let's make more it's pie. It's always pie. Especially always, if you have ice cream. Oh my God. You can always, it's never always, yeah, you, you always, always make pie. more pies instead yeah. of fighting over one piece of pie. That's right. Okay. That's right. Well, thank you all for uh, for joining me for another edition of the Step Out Podcast. Remember that you can subscribe on Stitcher Radio. Uh, you are If you're watching this, you can watch it on uh, YouTube. Also, you can subscribe on iTunes. New episodes are released each Wednesday. So thank you again for joining out, joining the Step Out Podcast with me and uh, Chantel Todman Moore, my friend here, we partnered together to do uh, a couple of things, and I'm glad she was able to, to join us for this episode of the podcast. And remember, uh, do something today to help you reach your dreams. I hope that you are living your life to the fullest, and I hope that you are loving the life that you live. Thank you.